I'm Chris Trott with Team TaylorMade, joined by Charlie Hall, Brooke Henderson, and Nelly Corder. This is Mill Grind for the Toolbox. We're going to start in different locations, move around with the long bunker shot first. Nelly's going to talk us through what you see when you hit this golf shot. Maybe we'll have someone else chime in, what techniques you play, how you hit it, and I'll put you in some challenging spots so we can talk about the Mill Grind 4 wedges. Perfect. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Okay, so are we going to that front pin? Front pin, Nelly. Okay. You called this shot, didn't you, off camera, I yes. noticed. <laughs> so you handed me two wedges straight out the gate. You've been I, eyeing this one for a while. I yes. have your 50 and your 54. What Correct. club do you have? I have my 58 right now. There's not much. I would say if there's not much room, between the fringe and the pin, I like to hit my 58. I won't open my face as much as I would with a shorter bunker shot just to get maybe the distance. But with a 54, it tends to release more. I would come in at a, like a lower trajectory and shoots a little bit more. So if I had the shot in a tournament, I would definitely probably, probably would pick my 58 over my 54 and 50. You guys While on the same page there? Uh, yeah, I, I really like your reasoning. I need the distance, so I would go with the 54 just because I need that little bit more. But I'd probably, yeah. I mean, I would hit my probably my 50 or 54 to the back ones, but I just feel like with, I would say maybe this is my max range for a 58, mm -hmm. but since I, there is not much room between the fringe and the pin, I would probably want something that spins a little bit more from this distance. Okay. Right. Let's see, uh, see some magic and if you okay. can come through with the description. Let's see if I can do it. These bunkers are soft. Okay, so I won't open up my face a little bit more. Obviously, weight on my left. Pretty good. Yeah, very good. Would you be happy with that? A little right, but not bad. Okay, and then let's play one of the further flags in then. Okay club change you think yes yeah, see like every course that you play there it depends on the grain of sand and the firmness of it right so it, these are pretty soft so which one am i going to let's go to the red okay i would probably play my 54 for that one so i feel, I feel like for this kind of bunker shot it's harder when the the sand's softer. soft yeah, yeah. yeah. It, for so sure much it's better for like a closest a little you no know, one that you can shot. get under yeah. a soft yeah. one short one for sure so Nelly, I've got to ask it before you play this one. You've yes. got, I've got three wedges that are all yours in my hand and they've all got different bounces. Yes. What's the thinking behind that? You now have the high bounce 54. Mm -hmm. You have standard bounce 50 and low bounce 58. Where's your head at? And can you just explain bounce in your own words? Um, for me, the most important bounce is the 58 because I like to hit, obviously growing up in Florida, you chip on Bermuda grass. So I, um, mainly use the bounce for my chipping. I don't like to ever use the leading edge. And then for my 50 and 54, it was just something that performed best when it came to pitching. Okay. I'm not really too specific with my 54 and 50, just really my 58. I really want it, if I want to hit a flop shot, I really want it to be flush against the ground, not kind of feel the bounce a little higher. And again, I want it to perform well out of the bunker, but uh, making sure that I feel the bounce when I'm hitting the chip shots is kind of the key for me when I pick a 58 degree. Okay, great. Okay. I'm just gonna guess the number of this one. Oh, this actually goes well to that first one. <laughs> it is an awkward yardage though, I find. Yeah. Especially with the green going that way. I'm gonna yeah, try one tough more. shots for sure. How far do you think this is? Be shot at 47. 47? Would you ever hit like jewelry ones out of it or not really? I I almost feel like I can kind of chip it out of here. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Spin. Nice shot. I mean, honestly, if I have this yardage in a tournament, then we're in trouble because you don't want this yardage <laughs> yeah. in a tournament. Do you know what I've noticed about doing these things in the past? Well, that's the sentence that comes yeah. out from so many tour players. Like, if I'm here, yeah. then it's the caddy's fault. I shouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, for sure. I don't know in Brooke's case because her caddy's her sister. <laughs> but she if, I'm, yeah, if I'm in this position on a par four or par five, then we're in trouble because I think this is one of the hardest shots in golf. Yeah. And it's just so inconsistent. So strategy comes into it. A hundred percent, yeah. So Charlie, then let's go with you next and put you on these lies here. 
as the English person in the group, and we touched on, or Nelly touched on, bounce and Florida, um, go to the near flag for us and tell us a little bit about what you might do here and then change one up back to that red flag behind. Well, when I first come to America, I found it, found it really hard to be chipping on Bermuda grass because we're not used to it in the UK. Um, so my coach even like tells me now I, I, I can lean the club too much. So I have to kind of feel like I, is it you release? Like yeah, almost yeah. release it, yeah. So, and this one, I don't know how the greens are running, but probably pitch it couple like four or five yards on and hopefully you'll spin so really get that right hand and release the bounce yeah it's really good yeah nice that is very nice that's actually kind of firmish actually so the thing is when i chip on bermuda i kind of straight arm it so i never hinge because then I feel like I start using the leading edge. Yeah. And when I straight arm it, then I, at impact- yeah, so demonstrate that to this camera here. So when I straight arm it, I feel like at impact, my club is in front of my hands. And that is how I use the bounce Revealing of the club. Revealing the underside, the camber of the bounce. I love that. Correct, so yeah. less wrist so, hinge and straight arm. Correct, okay. yeah. And, and that's just how I chip on Bermuda. And I feel like I always get quite wristy because Mm -hmm. Playing in England, it's always a lot wet. It's quite wet, and you don't want to be hitting them duffy yeah. ones. So mm -hmm. my bad mistakes is I go in too fiery. So my coach is always trying to get me to to level it out. Very Let's good. Try to play that one a little bit higher. Two nice. great shots. Yeah. What Roll about the red flag? I know you got your other two wedges there. Would you change the loft for the red flag? Um, I feel like these greens are kind of firmish. How far do you think that is? Did you say Brooke earlier? You 47. 47. From here, yeah. Um, yeah, you kind of just feel it. Great shot. Yeah. At what yardage do you bring in the laser or whatever you're measuring your yardage? I, I'm kind of, I like, I like a yardage, like, 20 yards away sometimes it just gives me an extra bit of feel yeah. um because i know i've got a pitching position my half like here um my lob wedge is like 55 yards that's in the uk that's like a base yardage and i just feel it back from there and i just find like that helps me quite a bit because okay. i like actually on par fives to get as close to the green as possible because i feel like i chip pretty well mm -hmm. so i don't mind a high shot or a tricky little shot um i would agree yeah with that too mm -hmm. i like, definitely like to send it again yeah. being a little bit more aggressive yeah exactly I walk it off till about 50. After 50, I start to use either the markings on the ground or, because I like to see where I kind of land it or yeah. if there's some so undulation a, on the green. You get a total and then you get a land number. Correct, yes. And I think sometimes on par fives, I like to get down there because if I'm like, say, 100 yards away or 80 yards away, I, I find like I sometimes do spin it to like, you know, when you get that bit the of back spins. Back, yeah. yeah. So or that's an interesting one. And obviously with the spin treads on these mill grind fours, which are those little, laser markings between mm -hmm. the grooves did you notice more spin you all changed into these wedges so quickly what did you notice about that when you first got into the mill grind falls um like firmer golf courses you just have that bit more advantage you know like when it's us open mm -hmm. and it's a bit firmer um you have a bit more advantage around the greens because you it can just you know you know it's going to spin a bit those nippy tight shots that you kind of need a little yeah. bit more spin because you don't have much room to land it or yeah. for the ball to react you just need it to like check check and then yeah, yeah. you know and like they were saying you know in on part fives when you send it and get it up near the green you have a lot of confidence in these wedges because they have a lot of spin so you can be in tight spots or tricky spots and still get up and down really easily yeah so you're more confident in the fairway so brooke you're up I'm up. And I've seen how much you wear out those wedges. So you're obviously <laughs> yeah. a, a maestro with the wedges. Let's go on the upslope and talk a bit about that. Let's go a bit closer to the hole. I'm going to grab your uh, My Symbol Canadian golf ball. All right. Oh. You got three of these. Take Wait. us to an upslope and talk to us a little bit if things change for you there. Sure. Where do you want me? Go over there where Nelly is, I reckon. Is there any grass that you don't like chipping on? No, I like all of it. Like, I think the Wait, one in the. Here. The grass that we chip off, like let's say up north, I find it so easy to chip off of that. Yeah. Like it's, it just is like, let's say the ones that are teed up, right? And you always make like those really good long divots, like when yeah. you get iron shots, yeah. like that kind of grass. I'm pretty sure it's bent rye grass yeah. up north. 
So what about upslope then, Brooke? What, does this change anything? Are you wanting to take a divot, not take a divot? I saw you just paste something off there. Talk to us about what you're doing. Yeah, so I like to know the exact yardage pretty much on every shot, even my putts, I paste them off. Um, so I like to know the yardage. There, I just kind of went up and took a look at the, the slopes on the green and tried to get a little bit of a feel like that. Um, with the upslope here, I'm definitely going down in loft because I don't want it to come in super high. I want it to come in a little bit lower. So I went down to 50. Okay. And, Do you chop uh, and change around the greens a lot? or? Yeah, I change a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these three wedges, That's... they're pretty worn just because yeah, I, I, I like to that. alternate, um, you know, back and forth. Because in the UK, like when I was growing up, I always used lob wedge, but loads of people like England golfers, they all used from lob wedge to seven iron. Like that's quite common in the UK, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. One of the big things in the UK is obviously get the ball on the green as yeah. close to the fringe as you can. Whereas I feel in America, that's just not the way they play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had yeah, an definitely. English. I had an English coach growing up, and he was like, "It's sometimes a percentage play to yeah. just get it on the green immediately." Yeah. yeah. But then I sometimes think you're taking a lot all the trouble, and you're just pitching it in a hole. Yeah. Shot. Great shot. But I mean, like, let's say a British, right? Yeah. You don't know like how it's going to react with no. the wind mm -hmm. and with the firmness of the greens. If it's downwind, and sometimes the downwind holes really affect the ball yeah. the way it checks. Like it just doesn't check at all. Mm -hmm. So you kind of well. take that variation out of play by just knowing that you're going to hit a little bit of a bump and run. Yeah. So technique changes for the slope. Anything there? More weight um, on a different foot than the other? Yeah, honestly, I don't really think about it too much. Um, very much a feel player. Yeah. So I, I just kind of go in, try to uh, just kind of feel the slope and compensate for it naturally. Um, I did go up in loft here, so I'm, I am now using a 60 just because there's not as much green to work with. Um, but with this uphill lot, it's, it's going to go pretty yeah. high up in there. Yeah. But this way, I feel like I can swing at it a little bit more and I don't have to worry about it, um, you know, running out too much. Good check. On that. Yeah, that'd yep. be good. Mm. And then give us one to that back like last back white flag. Sure. So I'm gonna go back to the 50 just because it's uh, lots of green to uh, to work with, and uh, I feel like I can run it in a little bit more. Miss Reed, but good pace. <laughs> <laughs> Need Brit. Where's Brit at? Yeah, exactly. So there you have it. I mean, the marks on the turf and the shots and watching you three just play different shots and go through your toolbox is something I think we can all learn from. If you want to learn more about the Mill Grime 4 wedges, be sure to check out taylormadegolf.com.